you have been complete all this time. You just forgot. Excellent. Now the conscious mind wonders, so what do I do next? The soul says, come up with a goal and move towards it. Yes, says the conscious mind, that is exactly what I need to do. All excited, feeling larger than life, the conscious mind gets to planning. She comes up with the most brilliant ideas, projects larger than life. Some can even save humanity. How noble of her. But when her idea is formed and she's done figuring it out, she'll have to go to work. Uh Uh-oh. Um. Work? Welcome to Fabulous One Philosophy self-mastery school for moms you're listening to the secret podcast for students only this will be our little secret are you ready for you 3.0 There's something missing in our spiritual teachings and that's because nobody shares with you that enlightenment is not the end. I appreciate and love the non-dual teachers out there because it's just the next stage in our evolution. When you become a non-dual mind, you go from you 1.0 to you 2.0. That is a massive upgrade. And it serves you well to take it all in and enjoy it for a while until you feel that pull to keep it moving. But you 2.0 comes with a big downside, which is that the little ego becomes a spirit ego. Your inner saboteur just became more powerful to stop you in your tracks. The reason is when you become you 2.0, you allow an influx of life force energy to come inside your body. If you're not careful, your body will go into a flight or fight response and the inner saboteur will come to the rescue. She will offer to take on all that life force energy because the body can't handle it. If your body is afraid, She will allow the inner saboteur to take charge without knowing what you have done. The divine feminine energy became dark. The inner saboteur will put the body in a deep sleep and start ruling your world. The spirit ego is the dark feminine, more powerful than our toxic masculine. The toxic masculine is a picnic compared to the dark feminine. The dark feminine can destroy the world, a power the toxic masculine doesn't have. It's very amusing to hear other women speak of this toxic patriarchy or toxic masculine energy. It's ignorance speaking. You heard some fancy words, now you're going to use it against men? Educate yourself, please, before you accuse others of being toxic, especially the opposite sex. Yes, I agree, there are some bad apples out there, but the worst ones came from the dark feminine. The dark feminine is the mass murderer, the serial killer, or the dictator in human terms. The mistake we make is to think these labels have human characteristics, and they don't. I know it will take many years to undo the bad teaching that has been happening out there about the divine masculine and the divine feminine. But if I can drill into your head one thing, it will be this. They are not a man or a woman. Hello, fabulous one. My name is Janice Nelson. Welcome to another episode of The Secret Podcast, philosophical letters to help you transform your inner saboteur into your inner strength so you can awaken the self-master within. I upload only parts of The Secret Podcast episodes on social media, but if you wish to enjoy the full episodes, I invite you to join my self-mastery school for moms. Student level membership is free. My secret podcast episodes are based upon my book, Fabulous One Philosophy, Self-Mastery Study Guide for Moms. If you find value in these episodes and wish to learn the complete teaching, grab a copy of my book. 
Today's episode is about the awakening of the dark feminine, how we all have contributed to her rise and is the reason why you 2.0 will suffer enormously. What she will do to us if we don't transcend her back into the light and how we can calm her down again by going through phase three, the final phase of the awakening process, which is called total transformation and why a lot of spiritual teachers don't talk about phase three. The divine masculine and divine feminine energy are not a man and a woman. They are energies within each one of us. They function as fractals, meaning they shape shift whenever they feel it suits their needs. Making something human is the easy way out. It makes it tangible and simpler to understand. But the simplicity of our ways has now created a huge misunderstanding and the effects are grim. Women pointing fingers at others as if that means anything. He did it. It's her fault. Men are not to be trusted. They are toxic. Drop this attitude right now. It will only cause you heartache and pain and it will lead you straight off the cliff. Do not follow the masses. Your alarm bell should go off when you hear large groups of people speak about something they feel righteous about. Move in the other direction. Do not follow the herd. I'm warning you. With love, of course. (laughs) Why is the world in such a dark place at the moment? There are three phases to this. Phase one, the small awakening, which is you... 1.0. Phase 2, the big awakening, which is you 2.0. And phase 3, total transformation, which is you 3.0. Right now, the 21st century is going through phase 2. The rise of the non-dual teachers who talk about being nothing, nobody and no one. There is no self and there is no past, present and future. There is only oneness. Again, it's a brilliant discovery and experience to have. Once you reach this phase two, you will feel as if you're walking on air. You will feel as if you have found a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. All your egoic desires will melt off you like snow melts in the sun. You will desire nothing, no thing, because you are nobody. There's nothing you have to do, nowhere you need to go, and nobody you have to become. Who you are in the here and now is all you need to be. You are whole and you are enough. But it's not the end. You are energy in motion and you will reach a point when phase two does not feel good anymore and you want to move on. Phase one is when your conscious mind realizes she is a soul. She's more than a mind, but a being, infinite energy, unlimited in her potential. The conscious mind wakes up to the fact she is not just human. She understands the potential of the being and that the being is not separate from her, but is her. Her whole life, she has been looking for her other half, searching in her outside world, thinking it must be a man. When you have a small awakening, it dawns on you that your other half is the being. Human and being united as one. Human being. You will stop seeking your worth in others. You will no longer long for anything to complete you because you know your worth. You have been complete all this time. You just forgot. Excellent! Now the conscious mind wonders, so what do I do next? The soul says, come up with a goal and move towards it. Yes, says the conscious mind, that is exactly what I need to do. All excited, feeling larger than life, the conscious mind gets to planning. She comes up with the most brilliant ideas, projects larger than life. Some can even save humanity. How noble of her. But when her idea is formed and she's done figuring it out, she'll have to go to work. Uh Uh-oh. Um. 
work? What's going on? My body doesn't want to move. I feel tired, lazy, unmotivated. I have to do what? I said what? I was going to what? <laughs> Welcome to phase two. <laughs> The conscious mind can't get the body to do what she wants. She has the will, but there's no power. How so? Nobody wants to admit that the mind has no power. The mind has bright ideas, great concepts and strategy, but the mind needs a body to execute. And if she has not done her work into preparing the body, the body is still stuck on thinking that she is a little physical body and she can get hurt. All these dreams you talk about actualizing, who has to do all that? Me, says the body. You must be joking, right? <laughs> I ain't doing all of that. Why would I? Diet? What? My own business? What? Working out? What? Sister, please. You're so full of yourself, says the body to the mind. So phase two is about awakening your body to who she really is. And that requires work, consistency, repetition, and lots and lots of patience. Lots of patience. In phase two, you will make so many mistakes and you will have to pick yourself up again and try again. You can't quit. If you do, you will suffer for eternity. So you keep going. And you are on a mission to rescue your body. Help her wake up. The mind has to rescue her body from the law of hypnotic rhythm. Your body has been conditioned since you were born. You have programmed her to behave a certain way. Now that you see the light, it doesn't mean she does. She doesn't. And she doesn't care. She will want to keep doing what you've always done. Because that makes her feel safe. She wants to stay where it is familiar and she will refuse to cooperate. Phase two is about rescuing your body. It's in every fairy tale you can imagine. Sleeping Beauty? What did she do? Fall asleep? Who had to rescue her? Hmm. The divine masculine energy is your conscious mind. Now don't fall into the trap to think it's a man. That's where we go wrong. Your conscious mind is the divine masculine energy. If I'm going to teach you one thing, it is this. The conscious mind is the divine masculine energy and the subconscious mind is the divine feminine energy within you. Our shows or movies are just a physical representation of what we can't see. So we had to limit it to a man or a woman to make the movie more interesting to watch. That is all. But what many spiritual teachers have done now is to take it out of context and apply it to human nature. No, these energies do not have male or female characteristics. Approach these energies from a universal perspective, the yin and yang energies, the physical and the non-physical. Why are we so confused? Because everything in our world is mirrored. Our mind is physical and our body is non-physical. Huh? What? Say that again. Our mind is physical and our body is non-physical. That is the true form. Red is go and green is stop. Yes, it is a mind twist. But if I can teach you this, you will fly, sister. Now, every fairy tale will fall into the right context. You have been misinformed your whole life. Accept it. Don't be angry. And just change your state. Do not linger where the unconscious are stuck. They will try to keep you stuck with them. Move away. Change your perception of reality and use Fabulous One philosophy to do so. What other fairy tales do we know? Snow White. What did she do? Fall asleep. Who had to come to rescue her? The prince. U2.0 is when your body wakes up out of the sleep. 
It's pure magic. You won't mistake it for anything. It's all fireworks inside your cells. It's a complete reset. It's the caterpillar turning into a butterfly. My teaching takes it to another level. Because now I will ask you, so, you just became a butterfly. What are you going to do now? What does the butterfly do? What is the purpose of being a butterfly? Can the butterfly die? Will she die? How does the butterfly protect herself? Can the butterfly be struck by bad weather? How is this butterfly going to survive or thrive in this world? You 3.0 is when you understand you are still in the matrix and you will never ever leave the matrix because it's part of your reality. It is part of the construct of the conscious universe. The whole point is to create heaven on earth. We are the ones who have to transform the matrix into heaven. We need to make it a great place to be. We. First, by saving ourselves. And after you feel secure, you can see what you can do for others. But most of us don't even know how to fend for ourselves. Because as women, we have been inundated with shame and guilt for our feelings. We have not learned to read them in a way that is conducive to our growth or play nice with others. All other women are perceived as a threat to your survival and our lack of trust keeps us small. You 3.0 accepts the world for what it is and accepts herself and others for who they are and gets to work. In this phase three, you will find your purpose and never stop doing the work. You will be on a mission to create heaven on earth. Make the world a better place without pointing fingers. You start where you have the most power, which is yourself. Change yourself first and the rest will become easy. If you want the world to be at peace, did you end the war within yourself? Tired of always running circles around yourself? Always busy doing, but never getting it done. You want the best for yourself. If you could just stop self-sabotage and move out of your own way. A good way to start your journey is to join my self-mastery school for moms. In my self-mastery school you will learn who the inner saboteur is and what she wants. How she puts you back to sleep even when you have awakened. How to recognize the inner saboteur in others. How to see the inner saboteur coming so you can protect yourself. And last but not least how to transform her into your biggest source of power so you can make each day your masterpiece. If this sounds interesting, all links are in the description down below. School doors are open for free right now and all you need to do is fill in your name and email and join the Fabulous One family. Looking forward to seeing you inside.